So any tool which we use, anything, there are some limitations to any, any, anything you use. No tool is perfect. And that means there are times when you choose a tool and then you hit the road blocker like, oh, I can't, I can't really do this thing using the tool of my choice. And that's the case with even APM. So I myself am an APM contributor and I kind of see all the pull requests which are raised on the APM and then I realize there are a lot of things which APM really doesn't support, right? And although I still consider that it's, it's, it's the best test automation tool out there so far, but still every app has a different dynamics. Every app is a custom app and every app has something which only that app knows and no one else knows. So your test automation tool is provided by a vendor who doesn't know which app will it be used for testing. And it will be very cool if we can have a tool which can really know the secrets of our app. And every app has a secret to tell, right? So in this talk, I'll be talking about what are the cases wherein we cannot really do things in terms of automation which we really want to do, but how can we actually overcome that limitation in the tools which we use? And this is going to be specifically using APM and even in APM it's going to be mostly for Android. So this talk has nothing related to iOS, but I'm happy to take questions about iOS after this talk because this is beyond scope of this. So this is me, my name is Rajdeep Verma. I've been uh, working in mobile test automation for around uh, eight years now. And to totally I've been working in test automation for more than 10 years. I've worked at a place called Badu, which I'll be talking about more in detail later. I'm also an open source contributor to APM and previously I was contributing to Calabash. So those who don't know what APM really is, it's a, it's an open source tool. There are, there are some people who actually make that tool. It's not, a, it's not a company. It's just a bunch of people who, who really do the coding, make that tool available and release it for all of you. And I'm one of them. And this is where I work. The magic lab is the parent company and, uh, these are all the brands, Badu, Bumble. How, by the way, Bumble is, uh, uh, is very popular in US. Anyone has heard of the name Bumble? A lot of them. Look, our camera, camera person has, has heard of it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really good. Like, accepting that you use it. it everyone says I didn't use it, but yeah, people <laughs> use it. They say my friend uses it. But it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good app, actually. It's one of the best. Best, best dating apps out there. So try it out. So yeah, that's, that's very popular in US, but I actually work in London. Um, so our headquarter development office of Magic Lab is at London. And uh, London is a really good city. It's, I believe it's better than New York, personally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I am actually not from London. I'm not a Londoner, I'm, a, I, I'm an Indian, so. Like four years ago, I was working in India and then I was approached by Badu to work for them. So I had to move my city. And London was good, everything was uh, nice, weather was, weather was also good, city was really pleasant. But there's one thing I missed very badly in London. And that was chai, masala chai. Like I can't, I can't imagine my life without this drink. So, like, it's my habit. After every git commit, git push, I need a sip of chai. So, <laughs> and in London, like, if, if, if anyone has been to any city in India, you, you just go down uh, on any street, any corner, you will find a tea vendor. And it's so easily available. In fact, you don't have to go down. It, it, Sometimes it will be coming in your office most of the time. But... In London, it's not available so easily. They, they drink something, it's black tea, which is, I don't know why they drink it. It's like, it's like poison, right? It doesn't taste good. So yeah, so I found a solution. I, I make a lot of masala chai in morning, put it in my thermal mug, 
take it to office and enjoy it throughout the day. But life is not as sweet as it seems. Because of this mug, I had a lot of mishaps. I've burnt my tongue many times. Has anyone else have experienced this with a hot cup of like thermal mug? Most of you, there, there are many people who say. The reason is simple because the mug feels very cold outside. It, it feels like there's, the tea must be very cold inside. And when you actually try to drink it, and it's really, really hot. Now, why is it so? Actually, the mug is insulating the information inside it. Right? So this mug is really acting like a black box for the tea inside it. Now, imagine if you are the tester and you have to test this mug. Right? Uh, how will you test it like this is keeping, keeping your tea hot without opening the mug? Is it possible? No, not really, right? Because it's like a black box. And the information is really hidden inside it. And if the information is hidden, it's a big challenge for us as testers. Because if anything, if limits the information, limits the testability, right? If you want to test something, we need to have information about it. So, no access to information is one of the biggest pain in testing. Not just in manual testing, but also in test automation, which I'll be talking about how. So sometimes we actually need to see through the box. And one of the fine example is this. If you have been to airports, the security testers there, they actually test your bags without really opening it, but by seeing through it, right? And sometimes they find really, really nasty bugs like guns or whatnot. So it's so easy for them. They can see through the test object and they can decide whether there's a bug or not, right? And that's what we in test automation want to do. And I'll talk some examples of how it, how it works. But APM traditionally is a black box tool. In fact, any of the tools which I named here or, or you have told me, uh, whether it's Perfecto or uh, XUI test, all of them are black box testing tools. Black box testing tool means they cannot really see through your app. They can see it as a user sees. Right? And APM is a black box tool. So what happens with black box, tool? Black, box, black box tools is it's impossible to automate some cases. I'll give you an example in the later slide, but there are some things it's impossible to test or impossible to automate. And there are sometimes you automate some things by doing some workarounds, but all, all you end up with is slow or inefficient tests. So let's take this example. It's a very simple example. And things which we thing which we want to do here is we, we have to scroll down until the item 420 exists. So how you usually will do is you will say until element exists. Now this is just a pseudo code. This is not a real APM code, just a plain English language. So element exists item 420, scroll down. Now there's a problem here. What if element does not exist? You, you will be, you will keep scrolling until the end of universe. Right? <laughs> so we need to put something, some mechanism here. The usual thing people do is they put a timeout block. Let's say, I want to scroll to this item, but don't waste more than 30 seconds or more than two minutes on, do, on doing this. If the item doesn't exist, come out of it gracefully, right? Or if not timeout, people use poll, some, some kind of polling mechanism, right? So that's good, that's kind of better. But still, what if element does not exist? You will waste 30 seconds. And it's not just 30, if the scroll view is really, really large, let's say you have a search results page which has thousands of results, how long will you scroll? 30, sometimes people keep like three, three minutes. Right? So this actually is 30, this number 30 or 2 minutes or whatever is a disappointment. So we need to find a better solution to this. 
Now, what if we could do something like this? No timeout, no poll, simply what if we could detect that you are at the bottom of the page. So, this condition will be something like until element exists or we have reached the bottom or we are done scrolling. Until then scroll down or, and if, if we are, you are at the bottom, come out of the loop. Now, the challenge here is whichever tool we are using, this, this reached bottom, like have, have we reached the bottom of the scroll view? Who can tell this? APM cannot tell this not even any other tool because this information is private to the view of app at least in android there, if there are other operating systems uh, uh, i don't know but in android if you have a scroll view whether you are at the bottom of the view or not is a is a private information to the view automation frameworks cannot access it so who can tell us this <coughs> to understand this really we need to understand uh, the dynamics of Android view. So, Android view, the problem is here. Yeah, this point is from, yeah. So, this view object here can tell us there is a method on this view object. So, can, can scroll vertically, which accepts a direction as parameter, which you can say, can I scroll towards down or towards up? And it returns a Boolean, of, Boolean value in return. And this method, if you are, in, how many of you have done any Android development in your life? Okay, there's one person which is good. So, every view has this, uh, this method can scroll vertically. Now, if you are an Android developer, you can use it and you can really find out whether you are at the bottom or not. But if you are a test automation engineer, you can't call this method. Okay. So, we need to come back to APM and understand what APM really is. So, how many of you think APM is a testing technology? No one? Okay, then why it is? Okay, I'll tell you. APM by itself is not a technology. APM is just a tool which is a meaningful mediator between you as a tester and some vendor provided tools such as for example in android they are ui automator or espresso in case of ios they are xcui test so apm by default doesn't have capability to drive your mobile device apm delegates it to underlying drivers like espresso driver ui automator tool driver ui automator driver xcui test driver android driver apm lots of them even tv driver for automating tv application so APM is not a technology, it's just a, what you can say, it's an adapter and you can just plug and play various technologies in it and it just does the job. So why we use APM then? Because it follows the web driver wire protocol and because of this, it's very easy to use any client in any language written using web driver protocol or W3C protocol these days. So that's the best part of it. You don't have to use the language in which the vendor provided tool is written or you don't have to force yourself on that uh, with that language. So if APM is this, in, in case of Android, there are two major choices with APM, UI Automator 2 and Espresso. Now let's have a comparison of both of them. So UI Automator 2, by the way, how many of you have actually heard of UI Automator 2 or Espresso? Okay, UI Automator 2, both, are provide, both of these are provided by Google. Now, I'm, I'm doing a comparison. This is not a comparison of APM's UI Automator or Espresso driver. It's a comparison of Google provided tools, like the bare bone tools this, which Google provides. They are, these are both like uh, Android uh, application, basically Android libraries. So, UI Automator 2 is a black box testing library and Espresso is a white box testing library when white box means it can access information inside your application so espresso is cool here however ui automator 2 can automate across apps so if you have more if your app let's say wants to interact with another app 
the, imagine there's a payment flow in your app wherein you are opening your app, making a payment which opens Google Play app and you want to make payment there. So you have to use cross cross app automation there. UI Automator 2 can support that, but Espresso doesn't, right? It can only automate your app under test. That's a minus point for Espresso. Now in the scope of this talk, we will check about these three, these two things. If Espresso is a white box testing tool, how can we utilize this? And if there's a limitation with Espresso that it cannot drive more than two apps or, or any, anything else other than your app under test, how can we overcome this? And with this, I'll show you a demo. So here I have a APM test script written and uh, so this is a ruby client but it's not it's just for an example you can do this in java also or any other uh, language which you are using <coughs> and this is a plain simple script there is no fancy test framework here so it's so that it's better to understand what i'm doing here is i'm creating here I'm creating a driver, apm driver.new, and with some desired capabilities. Capabilities are some espresso. I'm just telling that, hey, apm use espresso driver, and I'm giving my application path in the capabilities. Then I start the driver. Now the challenge then is, let me start this test. It's very simple. You say Ruby, copy the path. Uh, copy path, this. Now what I'm go really going to do is show you how to use element extension methods, right? So <coughs> what we can do here is I'm going to call methods defined on Android's view ob objects, which is like white box testing. What essentially it means is using your test automation code base, you can call methods defined in your Android application, like a tunnel, like you can, you can really get into your application using your test code. So one of the biggest challenge with APM, which I see in the APM forums, is a very, very easy thing which APM cannot do, and that's finding the color of a text. If you are wondering, APM, Okay, can't do it, it can't do it really. It's something like a style related uh, stuff. So, and by default, it's not supported in APM. Like you really don't wouldn't want to do it using APM. You, you would ideally write a unit test for doing this, but just for the sake of it, people do it. Because let's say someone has a design app or someone has a blogging app where they need to really ensure that the, the text color is really fine or the style is really uh, the way it should be then they have to use uh, such features, but they can't use APM because it cannot determine the styles of the text. So here, this is my app. Now look at the color of this, welcome to my talk box. The color is, there's some color to it, it's not black. And we need to determine what is this color. So application developer, when he actually wrote this one, he had, uh, he had set the color as uh, as this. So this is my this is the source code of my Android application, and uh, this is the edit text, which has a color text color something as nine nine thirty two cc. This is the this is what my app tells me that this is the color. Now using my test automation code, which is written in Ruby, I will find out this value. Now how I can do this is, every view has a property called uh, text, yeah. So every text view has something called, so this is from the official Android uh, documentation. Get current text color. So on every, on every text view, 
there is a method called get current text color which will return you an integer value and what we are going to do is we are going to call this java method defined on the android view using my code here so simply here what i'll do is um, i can say driver dot find element id message and this gives me a let me pull this up yeah so this gives me a element it's very simple. It's not, there's nothing fancy about it. Everyone has seen a web driver or APM test running in before. I hope. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this method, which is get current text color using my Ruby code. And that's how I'll be doing it. What I'm doing here is we are. I'm going to create a script for mobile backdoor. Now, let me explain this to you. So in APM, we have something called mobile commands using which, which are not really web driver uh, uh, specific uh, uh, protocol calls. They are mobile specific uh, commands. So there's a separate API for uh, uh, mobile commands. This actually uses the execute scripts uh, API from the web driver wire protocol internally. So that's why we are using execute script driver dot execute script. Now what is there in the script is we are telling that you need to execute a mobile backdoor command. This is just telling the server that this is going to be the command. Now followed by it, we need to tell what actually is the command. So command parameters are, we are going to target an element, which is going to be found by using this element and id message. <laughs> So we are going to find it using this ID and we want to invoke a method whose name is get current text color. Now this is the method which is actually defined, which is actually exposed by the Android view here, get current text color. Now how I do it is using uh, this script. So if I say this color, is equal to this. What I get in return is a hex value, is an integer value of the color, and that's what this method actually returns. Which, as I told you, this returns an integer in return type. And to convert it to hex, I can just simply do this. So this is nine nine three two cc is the value, and that's what actually was put in the view by um, Android developers. Now there's no rocket science about like I can see the color, but the pro thing is what I essentially done here is crossed the boundary of the black box, got into the view and invoked a method present on the view. So this is a very simple example. It's, it's, it's not really uh, very helpful, but in day to day life, I'll tell you what are the cases where we use it. Before that, let's look at let's let's have a look at another example. Uh, this time, maybe this one. Reached bottom. So I exit this one. And, uh, yeah. So remember, I showed you this method called name can scroll vertically, present on every Android view, which was here. During the presentation, I talked about it, uh, it's lost. Hmm. Yeah. So what this method is, is, it takes a parameter as direction and gives the return types as boolean. Now as opposed to previous method get current text color, this method actually takes a parameter on the view. So we can invoke the backdoor using this way. So we want to invoke a, a backdoor whose target is actually an element on the screen. And the ID could be the, uh, the ID generated using element, And the methods are is an array whose name is can scroll vertically. And we have to pass an argument to it. We can say integer, argument type is integer. And the argument value is one. So 
this method can tell us whether we can scroll down more or not. So here we are now. So if I execute this call, now if you see I am not at the bottom yet, I am in the middle. So if I tell this one, it says true and if I done scrolling to bottom and then call this, it returns me false. Yeah. And this was the while loop I was talking about. If you see this, if I call this now this way, let us say this way. So I scroll down slowly until I reach the bottom and as soon as I reach the bottom, the loop exists because it's no, it knows that I am already at the bottom. Now this is a very simple case again, it is not very big. Where do we use this? So there are some, uh, as I talked about, there are some cases which are impossible to automate. So one of them is, let's say, touch substring. Now look at this complicated back door. Yeah, what I'm doing is, I want to actually touch a text link inside a big string. And that link can be present on any position in the text. And that text does not have any ID, right? Ideally, what would you do is you will possibly find the coordinates mapping based on the device and put it in some file and read it from file and click on it. But if you if you can read the coordinate from the app itself, can it will be so so powerful. Like you you can ask your app that link in there this text box, can you tell me coordinates of this? And if you get that, you can, you just click on the coordinates. You don't have to go through the manual coordinate, coordinate finding or keeping a hard coded uh, key value pairs for that. So that's a complicated, but that's not it. <coughs> now imagine you want to test something. Imagine you want to test something wherein it's really impossible to do with the dynamics. For example, you are testing a weather app in which weather refreshes every 30 minutes. And you need to automate this case. Like you need to automate that after 30 minutes, weather is refreshed. Will you be able to automate this? Waiting for 30 minutes is insane, right? So what you can do is you can expose a backdoor from your app, which actually sets that 30 seconds to three seconds and while testing you can tell your app hey I want I'm testing you can you please make that 30 seconds at three seconds temporarily so that I can make sure that the weather is refreshing nicely so that's the backdoor so even users or can if you as a test automation engineers can ask your developers to modify your app temporarily for testing purposes and one of the one of the uh, biggest place where we use it is dynamically switching the back backend URLs. So sometimes we test against the integration, system integration. Sometimes we test against, uh, let's say, UAT environment. Sometimes we test against a QA environment. Sometimes in production environment. Now we cannot build different apps pointing to different URLs. It will be like generating so many artifacts, gener generating so many APKs for different URLs. So what we can do is we can ask our developers to create a backdoor which can, if and to the backdoor can take parameters of backend uh, host and if we say QA, the code will be invoked to connect to QA. So this way your test automation code can easily talk to your app. And this way your app can give information about its secret to your test automation code. Now how does it actually works under the hood in Espresso driver? To know this, we need to know what how actually APM works. Now, this is a overall big picture. After this talk, if you have any questions, you can ask me. <coughs> yeah. So imagine this is your Android device. In your Android device, you have an application to test, and that's your app under test. Now, your app under test, what APM does is it gives you another application 
which actually instruments your application of interest. Now, what is instrumenting? So, instrumenting something means equipping something with measuring instrument. So, remember my, my mug which actually was not so good in, in terms of serving its purpose, but still it keeps the coffee uh, or, or the chai warm, right? But the problem is I do not know how hot the tea is inside. Now imagine if I can put a thermometer inside which can show me the information outside like it is the current temperature is let us say uh, uh, 70 degrees Celsius now, right? So, that will be so useful. What I would, if I do this, if I put a temperature indicator on that mug, what essentially I do is I am instrumenting that mug. So, instrumenting something means equipping something with measuring instrument and that is what Espresso does. So, you have your application which you want to test. What Espresso essentially does it? It instruments it and the way it instruments is by giving another app which runs in the same process space. So, example this is my app could be com.myapp.app .app, that is the package name of this app. So, what Espresso does is it gives another app which is Espresso Server APK and this APK the Espresso Server points its target towards com.my.app right. Sorry yeah, com.my.app and that is how Espresso tells that you are going to be monitoring this app and both apps are actually signed using the same key store so that they become like they, they run in the same process space. Now what actually instrumentation is? It is Android's testing support library and it exposes all the interactions the system has with instrumented app. Espresso is one such library based on instrumentation. There are many. One of them previously was Robotium, if anyone has heard of it. A Robotium was way uh, before Espresso, it was uh, the most popular test automation framework based on instrumentation. So, instrumentation is done by creating a secondary APK, which is Espresso Server APK in our case. And both main and secondary APK, both of them run in the same process. It is the same process ID and they run in the same context. So, if they run in the same context, they can access each other's information. So, that is how an Espresso server app can really access the context of the application under test. So, this is Espresso server instrumentation and because they are instrumented, they are like best buddies. And as best friends, they share secrets. So, how actually it works from the client till the server. So, here you have APM client here which is in my case was a Ruby bindings and it could be Java bindings or PHP or JavaScript whatever you use. So, that is basically what we call is APM client. And then there is a APM Node.js server running and we invoke a mobile backdoor command which is a execute script command. That actually invokes an endpoint defined as slash backdoor inside the Espresso server APK. Now, Espresso server and our application under test are best friends, right? Because they are instrument, one is instrumenting another. So, as any best friends, they can share the secret. So, Espresso server asks, hey, can you tell me the color of that view inside your this activity and the app under test, yeah, it is green. And that is how it actually the backdoor works. Now, I am explaining in the very high level internally this happens in form of code. And for UI Automator 2 APIs, there is a separate library which is also built in Espresso server. So, although it is called Espresso server, it is not just Espresso, it also has some bits of UI Automator 2 inside it for driving out of the app areas. And that is where it is. So, what I showed in the demo was element backdoors. We also, I also call it view function. So, the inside Espresso server, each element is stored as Android's view object. So, android.view.view .view object, right? And because this is stored as a view object, 
it has access to all public method inside these views. So it can call these methods using um, their name and all the parameters. But just one limitation is the parameters has to be only the primitive types because when we are passing the parameters from a Ruby code or Java code to the application and test, we are passing it over JSON. So we don't still really have a mechanism to serialize non-primitive data types yet. And these methods can be called in a chain. So you can call one method, on output of that you can call another, on output of that you can call another and so on. There is no limit to it. <laughs> and yeah, as I said you can pass arguments to these backdoor functions. Now there are not just view functions, there are other types of backdoors also present currently in APM's Espresso driver. So one which I already talked about was target element wherein we can call the methods defined on a view. But then you, there are two more stuff, two more types of backdoors called target activity what, and, and target application. What you can do is you can either define a custom method in your activity or in your applications master class and you can invoke those also using your test automation code base. Um, so we already covered element, these two activity and applications are uh, possibly will not be able to cover in this talk, but they pretty much work as same way as element. So yeah, that was pretty much uh, it in terms of example and these are some references. Uh, the feature was, is, is pretty much new, uh, so may not be available in the least way, 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 if you are not up to date with the latest version of APM, it's not, it may not be there. So yeah, that's all, you are welcome for asking questions, thank you. Thank you.